All right, time for our acid-base titration lab. We're testing antacids today. Antacids have three main things in them. They have first sugar, then calcium carbonate, which is the same as limestone or chalk, and then they have other binders like cornstarch and that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, they have some colors in there too. It makes this one kind of yellow. Uh, the main thing in there that you need to be concerned about is the calcium carbonate. That is what makes this stuff work. Now, when you eat these, this is the chemical reaction for what's going on. Looks like this. Calcium carbonate and two hydrochloric acids makes calcium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. Each of these types of tablets, if we check the back, says they've got 500 milligrams, that's 0.5 grams, of calcium carbonate. We're going to test that out here today. Um, as far as the cost, stay tuned. We'll, we'll talk about that in class. So move those off to the side. Other materials besides those tablets, we've got burettes. Okay, these things have numbers written on them. Uh, fine graduations. They start at 50, go up to zero at the top. So we measure from the top down on these things. Each burette has a different solution in it. One, this one over here, it has a red label way up at the top that we'll look at later, has hydrochloric acid. Watch for that concentration on the board when you come in. Sodium hydroxide will be over here. NaOH is what's in there. Again, watch for the precise concentrations of those things. You'll also have phenolphthalein in a dropper bottle. Uh, this stuff has gotten kind of old and brown. Yours might be a little more clear than that, but it'll work. Uh, and obviously the tablet and an Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, one of these triangular looking deals. So you're going to take your tablet. As we get ready to go here, I would break it up it's going to react a little better. Probably just break it twice like that. That should do it. Now we need to react this thing with acid. The reaction here is exactly the same as what happens when you eat this stuff and it goes into your stomach. It's the same acid, hydrochloric acid. But we need to be careful with measuring these things. Because a titration, we're measuring exactly how much um, of all the solutions we're using. So let's pull up here. And way up at the top, we see how much hydrochloric acid we have to start off with. And that looks like about 1.61 is what that looked like. Okay, let that camera sit still again. Um, so you need to write down that number, 1.61 milliliters or whatever your volume is initially on there because it's about to change. You need to dispense about 25 milliliters of acid into your flask. So I was at 1.61, I should be looking at about 26.6 or so. And so down we come, down we come, down we come. This stuff slowly comes in. You might be able to see there what's happening. We've got some bubbles of carbon dioxide gas forming as the acid hits the calcium carbonate. Same thing that would happen when you eat this stuff. Still going, still going, and I'm watching the burette now. I'm looking for it to hit 26.6 or so. Right about there. I don't want to go too much over. That could cause me trouble later. Okay. That looks about right. Hopefully you can see this. We've got a lot of bubbles, and that stuff is reacting. Now you need this stuff to react completely. It needs to fully dissolve. No more lumps left in there. 
no more bubbles being produced. Alright, so you need to watch yourself there. Don't start the next step until that's done bubbling. Now we can get ready for the next step, but don't actually start the next step. Um, a little bit more about what's going on here. There will be some excess hydrochloric acid from this. The calcium carbonate is the limiting reactant. Hydrochloric acid is in excess. We're going to measure exactly how much hydrochloric acid is left over by reacting it with our base, the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so while that's finishing reacting, looks like we're getting close, but not quite there. I need to make a couple of measurements here, preparing for the titration. Okay, the first thing I need to measure, again, is how much volume is in the base burette to start with. So I'm going to turn this around. I put my hand back there so you can see a little bit better. Looks to me like 13.70, right at 13.7 milliliters. So set this back down again. Write down your initial volume of that base just like you did for the acid so that this way we'll be able to know how much we've actually allowed to come out of the burette. The other thing that's important at this stage, and we can do this right now while it's still reacting, is add some phenolphthalein. A couple of drops will do it. If two drops makes you happy, use two. If you want a third one, go ahead. Knock yourself out. That is an acid base indicator. Phenolphthalein, again, is colorless in acid, but turns bright pink in base. And so when we've added enough base to react with the acid that we've put in there, that phenolphthalein will turn our flask from, in this case, a yellow or whatever your color tablet is, to a pink. So that's just about done reacting. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to start adding my base now. So you might want to have one partner swirling. My right hand's better at swirling, so that partner will do that. The other partner opens this. It's open now. This is called a stopcock. Yes, you can laugh now so that you get out of your system before, before class. And I'm just going to let this thing run for a little bit because when I get close to the end of this titration, it's called the end point when we stop, we'll start to see some pink color developing. You may be able to start seeing some a little bit as it's going in right next to the edge of the flask there. I'm just going to let this thing run right up until the flask turns pink. And a little bit of pink right there where the solution's going in, but it's not all pink yet. 